Temple Mount Denial, Disproved One Bucket at a Time. In 1999, bulldozers illegally ascended the Temple Mount to surreptitiously remove thousands of tons of ancient earth to make way for a subterranean mosque. Countless artifacts, dating from the first temple period, were unceremoniously dumped in a garbage heap in the Kidron Valley. Five years later, two archaeologists, Dr. Gabriel Barkai and Zakai Devira procured a government license to have the debris removed and transferred to Ekmek Zarim National Park on the western slope of Mount Scopus. And there they established the headquarters for the Temple Mount Sifting Project. Thousands of volunteers have come from around the globe to assist a staff of 15 employees in sifting through more than 400 truckloads of archaeological treasures, one bucket at a time. With only 70% of the recovered earth sifted, more than 500,000 artifacts have been painstakingly categorized and documented. One of the oldest, a 3,000-year-old seal from the time of King David, predates the building of Solomon's Temple. Hundreds of thousands of coins, stone vessels, jewelry, and flooring tile fragments have been removed from the Second Temple period and before. Nearly a quarter million volunteers from all facets of society, both Israeli and foreigners, have come to take part in sifting earth from the Temple Mount. Dr. Barkai noted that Roughly 10% of the datable finds sifted so far were linked to the 400 years of the Davidic dynasty, the first temple period. He said, we have from that time even a seal impression with the name of one of the priestly families that were responsible for the administration of worship at Solomon's temple some 2,600 years ago. From the second temple period, during the 4th century BCE, he said we have a large amount of coins from the Persian period with Hebrew inscriptions with the name of the province of Judah, Yehud. And those tiny silver coins, he said, are the earliest discovered that were minted in Jerusalem. One special find was a silver half shekel paid by every Jewish male once a year as the temple tax. Barkai said that the project has identified more than 800 of the 6,000 coins thus far recovered, and they were from the temple periods, including the Hasmonean, Maccabean, and Herodian dynasties, and the first revolt against the Romans. These are these treasures that we found from the Temple Mount, and no one's talking about them. Is it like the, the sh sifting, sifting the, the of the... Temple Mount Sifting yeah. Project, right. Mm -hmm. So one of the mm -hmm. things he found was this seal impression from the treasurer of the temple, the scribe who was the treasurer of the Temple Mount. And on the back of the seal impression, it has the name of the, of the, of the scribe, and on the back you see the impression that, that this seal sealed a bag. And, and it, clearly it was some kind of bag of something very precious. It, it must have been uh, a bag of some kind of precious metal possibly from the temple, or may, maybe it was some kind of offering. It was something in the temple treasury. So imagine that, you've got this figure who we know his family were, were uh, the temple treasurers, in charge of the treasury. Mm -hmm. And then you find this tiny little thing, like a, a few millimeters, in, you know, an inch, which has... A bula? A, so bula, a bula, right. Okay. It's a seal impress, the clay seal impression that has the name of the scribe. And you can see it was pushed up against some kind of bag. So it's amazing the things that are being discovered today. And that's one of the type of things I, I share on the Hebrew Voices podcast. This is wonderful. And so it's to show the reality when you hear all oh, some stories, mm -hmm. the temple didn't exist, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. This is not true. There is right, like facts right. and they are finding. I heard also from them that they are finding that it was even more beautiful than they were expecting. Yeah. You know, one of the really amazing programs I did on, on the Hebrew Voices was interviewing the woman whose, whose job it is to put back together the ancient floors. So they found these these little floor tiles, and they're and you know from the temple from the second temple from okay. the temple mm -hmm. as it was renovated by Herod. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus Yeshua walked on the floor of the temple, this is the floor he would have come to. Mm -hmm. Now you find these little pieces, and they're different shapes, and, and it's a puzzle that she has to fit together. And she's actually a mathematician. That's how she does it. She, uh, she uses statistics and stuff like that. And it was really profound because she's telling me how. When you, you know, a lot of these people, they lived in, in, you know, most of the people came to the temple, they may have never seen a paved floor. 
These were people who had dirt floors in their homes, and they would go on the street, and the street was made of dirt, and they'd go on the highway, and the highway was made of dirt, and then they walk into the temple, and they see this beautiful paved surface, and that's why she explains Josephus, who's the Jewish historian from the first century, he goes out of his way to describe this this floor that she has now discovered and put back together. And one of the profound things about it is that she was telling me how in order to make this multicolored floor, it had all these different, and it wasn't a mosaic. A mosaic has all these cubes that are all the same shape but different colors. They're like pixels in a, in a JPEG for those who know computers. This is a different thing altogether. It's called opus sectili. And what it, what it consists of is different shapes that are put together in very inter, intricate patterns. And she was telling me that to make the different shapes, they took stones from Tunisia, and they took a black stone from Tunisia, they took a white stone from the, from, um, the mountains of Jerusalem, they took stones from all over the, the ancient world and um, put them together in different shapes and sizes and fit them into this beautiful puzzle. And as I, she was telling me this, I realized, so the floor where Jesus of Nazareth walked, the floor where my Jewish ancestors walked when they came to the temple, was in a sense a picture of God's plan for, for mankind. Exactly. You have people of different colors and shapes. And, and, and it's interesting because the, 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 the image of a mosaic that we'll often hear about has all these cookie cutter shapes. They're all the same size mm-hmm. and the same shape. They're just different colors. But the floor that actually was in the house of God, that floor had different shapes and sizes and they fit together in this very intricate pattern. And I think that's a picture of God's people. I was so excited. This woman's telling me about an ancient floor and mathematical statistics, and I'm getting excited about, this is a picture of God's plan for the world, this floor. Did you tell her? I did. And she's like, yeah, I'm a scientist. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, in other words, she, she didn't necessarily yeah. see that, but the but point is see- she discovered these things, and I could see, wow, as a, as, as a Jew, this is the spiritual application. It is, and because when you know more and more God and how He works and all these yeah. principles, He loves us as individuals, yeah. all different, but we are all so important. But we're also different shapes and sizes. Yeah. You know, you, you're a Christian, I'm a Jew. You have different people coming, like we read it but about. But we can be one picture together. We can come into this intricate pattern and fit together, and it's God's plan for that to happen, I believe. Good.